Dijna mechi so don't bury my the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Almighty God this morning as well. We give all the glory and honor to the name of the Lord for such an opportunity to come before him. Amen. And we bless the leadership of the church for this great honor and opportunity to stand before you to share the word of God with you. Beloved, throughout the past three weeks, the Lord has been very faithful in our lives. The, the Lord has been good to you and me. Many are the petitions that we brought before the Lord. Many are the things that we waited upon the Lord for. And because he is faithful, because he is true to his word, because he remains God and nothing changes his godliness, I believe that he has glorified his name in our lives. I believe that many are the things that we can testify about that the Lord has done for us within in the past three weeks. To some of us, the Lord has brought his healing upon our lives. To some of us, the Lord has kindled up the zeal within us. To some of us, the Lord has opened doors. Doors of good works, doors of marriages, and so many things that the Lord has availed unto us. I believe believe that the Lord has faithful uh, been faithful to you and me in so many ways. So, I believe that we would agree with uh, the Bible in Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. The Bible says that the Lord said he was going to rain uh, uh, upon us the latter rain but then my emphasis isn't even on the rain but then upon every grass of the field which I believe that Everyone who availed himself to be part of the grass of the field, the Lord has showered his rain upon us. Amen. To everyone who availed himself and allowed the, the Lord to touch his life, to allow the Lord to impart this power of his into him, I believe that the Lord has indeed brought a great change into each and every one of us. Amen. And one thing that is sure is that when someone waits upon the Lord, when someone comes before the Lord in prayer and fasting, the person is drawn closer to the Lord. So we realize that throughout the, the process or the, the period of fasting, 
the, the Lord has even uh, gotten closer to us. We are able to hear from the Lord more than even before. We are able to commune with the Lord more than we used to do. Why? Because whilst waiting upon the Lord, the Lord has also uh, drawn close to us. Amen. And then, you know, I must say, no, send any any radio, and go put in Kitahono, a trick on a name, a boy, me a bear radio, you will be a so you'll be any. I'm afraid you're telling Kacha Caneno, no, you're not saying a caradin, and go put him, never did you go patch him. Our purpose for which we waited upon the Lord throughout the 21 days was that the Lord would empower us. And then the Lord has indeed empowered us. But then there is one thing that is sure. No matter how much we have been empowered by the Lord, uh, no matter how much we have been uh, drawn closer to the Lord, the the, uh, the the more we draw closer the more we are empowered the more the enemy is also more furious about us so as much as we have been empowered by the lord so do we also need the lord to protect us so do we also need that the the, the, the guidance of the lord will be made greater upon our life so the the bible says in second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 the, the niv uh, version makes us understand that the lord wouldn't only strengthen us but then he's also more than able to protect us because he is faithful amen Beloved, the Lord is more than able to protect us. Even after he has strengthened us, after he has given us so many good things, after we have waited upon the Lord in, in, in our prayer and in our fasting, we are also trusting that the Lord will be faithful by giving us his strong hedge of protection around us. Amen. Beloved, because uh, if we are not protected by the Lord, if the Lord doesn't continually keep us, then the enemy will make prey of us. But then one thing that we can be sure of is that if only we we'll continue to uh, remain with the Lord, if only we we'll continue to stay where the Lord has placed us, you know, when we come before the Lord, we wait upon the Lord and the Lord draws us close. And his purpose is to keep us close to him so that whatever thing that he has said concerning our lives will continue to be made manifest in our lives so if only we will continue to be where the Lord has placed us then I believe that his protection is also going to be our portion this day I'm speaking with you shortly on the theme um, I'm, I'm speaking with you on the theme that except the Lord permits or except the Lord allows. Except the Lord permits. You know, when we stand with the Lord, when we are walking with the Lord, when we have waited upon the Lord and we, we, we are in, in line with whatever thing that the Lord does, except the Lord permits, no evil will be able to befall us. Amen. Beloved, I believe that once we have uh, come before the Lord, once we have waited upon the Lord for so long a time, uh, you and me, will, you and I will testify that indeed the Lord has brought us to a position that uh, we, we can uh, be in tune with the Spirit of the Lord. We can relate to the Lord as well as we are uh, expected to relate to the Lord. And so if the Lord is still with us and we also continue to remain where the Lord has placed us, then though the, the 
that the enemy will be furious about the things that the Lord might have given us. Though so many things will like to uh, prevail against us because of what the Lord has done in our lives. But then there is one thing that we need to assure ourselves of. That except the Lord permits, except the Lord allows the enemy in our lives. The enemy wouldn't ever have its way in our lives in Jesus' name. Beloved, let us turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1 down to verse 7. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1 to 7. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1 to 7. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. Yes. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim and his heart was moved and the heart of his people and the trees of the wood are moved with us the trees of the wood are moved with the wind then said the Lord unto Isaiah go forth now to meet Ahaz thou and share Jashub thy son at the end of the candy of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field and say unto him take heed and be quiet fear not neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands for the fierce anger of raisin with syria and of the son of remalia because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remalia have taken evil counsel against thee, mm. saying, Let us go up against Judah, and vex it, and let us make a bridge therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the sake of our time we will take just the english reading with the part of the bible where we just read we are made to understand that certain people uh, uh, conspired uh, or wanted to stand against the people of judah they wanted to prevail against jerusalem all because of how the lord had made jerusalem of course jerusalem or the people of judah were trying to live life that was pleasing to the lord and for that reason and there was a need that these enemies who couldn't be like them would rise against them and these very people who had risen when people who were far from uh, the people of judah but then israelites and then the people of syria who had risen to to prevail against jerusalem and, and for that matter the people of judah but the glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The verse 1 says that though they had wanted to war against Jerusalem, they could not prevail against it. They could not prevail against it. And then when you come to the verse 7, it says that that's saith the Lord God for it shall not stand neither shall it come to pass why because that saith the Lord God because that saith the Lord God the Lord has refused to permit them to prevail against his people he doesn't need to give them any reason why he has refused them to uh, prevail against his people but then the Bible makes us understand that it shall not come to pass neither shall it stand neither shall they be able to prevail against the people of God only because that saith the Lord 
Only because the Lord has refused to permit them from prevailing against his people. This is what the Lord is saying unto you and me this day. It doesn't matter the people who conspire against us. It doesn't matter those who envy that which the Lord has made of us and would like to stand against us and take that which the Lord has given into our hands as possessions of our hands. All that the Lord is saying is that no matter what their plans may be, no matter how they may join forces against us, because it is not of the Lord, it is not going to stand. I don't know whatever thing that it might be. Uh, enemy has plotted against you and me looking at so many things that the lord brought into our mess during the 21 day program the lord made us understand that he brought so many boxes in our midst and everyone who availed himself is going to have a portion of those and i believe that as a result of all these things that the lord has done the enemy is actually furious because of that many are the things that we are even yet to see after waiting upon the lord Beloved, the lord is trying to make you and me understand that he has a purpose for our lives he has a reason for making us wait upon him he has a certain uh, plans concerning us that he is still working out to see them make manifest in our lives and beloved these purpose have enemies these plans have enemies there are certain people that would love to prevail against us not seeing the, the will of the lord the purpose of the lord come to pass in our lives you know we realize that the syrians and then the people of israel who, who uh, planned it isn't that they didn't plan it isn't that they didn't join forces it isn't that they didn't decide to stand they actually made every effort to be able to stand against them but then the bible makes us understand that all their effort proves uh, were, were proven future why because the lord had said so amen and into the syria for israel for authority a year judah for no and yes so i guess you and yes one for no one one crime and yes and one year one day sorry it's your own then so she said you know what i know so see you know yeah but then you know i said running and go for an so beloved until the lord permits until the lord allows the enemy to uh, have a way in our life the enemy would never have hold in our lives i believe that there are so many things that the lord has planned for us which we haven't even seen uh, materialized in our lives yet even uh, during the prophecy the lord made us understand that there are, he, he himself has a purpose for which he has called us he has a, a plan for which he has brought us to his present and we are yet to see those things even come to pass amen and it's black on shane bano but then every good thing that the lord has for us every good thing that the lord plans also comes with so many enemies so beloved when you look into the, the scriptures of the the story of job which we all know of when you read from Job chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible makes us understand that Satan was uh, telling the Lord that it's as a result of the protection of the Lord around Job that Job is still uh, steadfast Job is still uh, in right standing with the Lord and then again, he, he sought for a permission 
that he would be able to touch the life of Job. So that he will be able to touch the possessions and everything that belong to Job. One thing that uh, we, we realize from this uh, story or this reading is that for Satan to go to the Lord and say these things means that he might have tried severally but then his efforts have proven futile so you realize that it, it is possible that he might have seen if he hadn't seen job if he hadn't seen the hedge of protection around job he wouldn't even talk to the lord about that which he had seen uh, around job meaning that he had seen job and the protection of the lord around job and not only had he seen the protection around job but then I believe that he might have tried planning, tried uh, scheming so many ways to reach out to uh, Job to take away certain things that belong to Job, but then they were all uh, futile. So now at a point he has realized that looking at all these things that the Lord has done for him, unless the lord permits me i wouldn't be able to go into the territory of job to touch uh, anything of his, his or even to put him into uh, that difficult position which i want to put him in just because the lord hadn't permitted he didn't have the chance to be able to go in and then touch the life of job likewise is the lord telling us this day that even as he protected job and everything that was his to some of us the lord has given us healing to some of us the lord has given us provision to whatever thing that we brought before him to some of us the strength and the power that the lord has given unto us is the zeal to be able to walk in this christian journey and as the bible makes us understand in the second thessalonians 3 3 where we quoted from that not only is the lord able to strengthen us not only is the lord able to provide for us but he is also faithful that that which he has given unto us he would also be able to protect if that is the case then today my prayer to the almighty god is that whatsoever strength that he has given unto us whatsoever gift that he has given unto us whatsoever provision that he has made in our lives every good thing of the lord that he gives unto us is enviable of the enemy so the enemy would like to come after us to take them away from us but my prayer is that he wall around us with his wall of fire my prayer is that he will wall around us with a very thick hedge like he did around job and his possessions so that when the enemy comes close unless the lord permits unless the lord allows him he wouldn't be able to touch us nor anything that the lord has given unto us beloved when we waited upon the lord throughout the program i believe that there are so many things that the lord has done which we are we, we are not even aware of so many things that the lord has restored in our lives which we are not even aware of and then because of these things that the lord has given unto us there is a need for the protection of the lord to be around us when you look into the scripture you realize that 
everyone who was given a, a, a treasured possession anyone who was made peculiar in a certain way in the midst of his people he had people around him who were uh, uh, scheming against him or trying to uh, take away that thing which he has been given so even our lord jesus christ you realize that because of the purpose and then the plan uh, concerning his life when he came to this earth he didn't find it easy we realize that so many prominent people in the bible like david and the rest because of the purpose of the lord concerning their lives they had to face so many challenges they had to uh, face so many oppositions before they would realize the purpose of the lord upon their lives the, the bible has made us understand that the lord has a, a plan and purpose concerning our lives he makes us understand that he knows the thoughts that he has concerning us and because of these thoughts so many hatred will come against us because of these thoughts of the lord concerning us so many oppositions will like to rise against us but then the lord is assuring us today that the lord is making us aware of the fact that if only we we'll continue to cleave to the lord if only we we'll continue to wait upon the lord if only after receiving of the lord these good things we wouldn't go away but they'll continually abide in the presence of the lord then accept he the lord permits then accept he the lord allows or pays way no evil one will be able to lay hold of that purpose of the lord upon our lives no evil one will be able to tamper with that will and then the thought of the lord that he has concerning our lives beloved when we go to genesis chapter 37 verse 1 following we see a young man called joseph this is a story most of us are very familiar with well, the bible makes us understand that even before he started having his dreams he was hated by his brethren why because he was one who was very close to his father he was the beloved of his father and the closer he was to his father the more hatred that came upon him maybe you and i can place ourselves in the position of joseph today as close as we get to the lord so will, will the, the hatred or the, the, the fear of the enemy killed against us be also increasing so the bible makes us understand that because he was a uh, beloved of the father the brethren hated him and not only that when he came to the verse 5 of the same chapter 37 of genesis the bible makes us understand that because of the dreams that he was having because of the purpose of the lord concerning his life it made the hatred for him even increase the more maybe you and i we do not know the purpose that the lord has brought us to fulfill we do not know uh, the things that the lord has in store for us but maybe the enemies have seen it even before we, we get there they have foreseen what the lord has in store for us or, or the greatness that the lord is going to bring out of us 
And based on that foresight, they have begun planning and scheming against us to truncate that purpose of the Lord from coming to pass in our life. But then our Lord is faithful. Our Lord is faithful. The Lord has made us understand that to them that abide with him, to them that continually remain with him, he is also faithful in their lives. And so, though, though the enemies may plot, though the enemies may plan so many schemes against us, it is only the purpose of the Lord that is going to come to pass in our life. And until the Lord has granted that permission, the enemy wouldn't have its way in our lives. I don't know what the purpose of the Lord is concerning you today. But then there is one thing that I am aware of. That the Lord's purpose concerning our lives are all positive. The Lord's purpose, the Lord's plans concerning our lives are those that will give us an expected and glorious end. And because of this, uh, we, we wouldn't find things easy. But then if we continue to remain with the Lord, you know, the Bible makes us understand that according to the story of Joseph, the brethren had initially wanted to uh, take away his life. But then the Lord stopped that from coming to pass through Judah. Because it wasn't the will of the Lord. Because the Lord hadn't permitted them to tamper with the life of the man called Joseph. For all you know, maybe to you, you, you think that the, 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 the accidents that you see coming your way and then the, the fire outbreaks that the Lord saves you from are the only things that the enemy plans against you. Joseph didn't know the schemes of the brethren against him. I believe that he only saw them as people uh, that he was born with brethren of his soul Oh, wholeheartedly he told them whatever thing that the Lord revealed to him without knowing the thoughts that they were having against them. Maybe there are so many schemes against us that we do not even see with our eyes. But then my prayer to the Lord this day is that he who didn't permit the brethren of Joseph to touch the life of Joseph. May that Lord continue to be your Lord. May that Lord continue to be your protector. May that Lord continue to be your God. You know, it wasn't only schemes of death that they plotted against this man called Joseph. The Bible makes us understand that they, they kept him in a pit or in a certain system. But then that system couldn't hinder that, that, that purpose of the Lord from coming to pass in the life of Joseph. Why? Because the Lord hadn't permitted it to do so. I don't know what kind of fit you, you might have been placed in. I don't know what kind of uh, uh, hindrance or barricade that they might have set around about you to hinder you from getting to your purpose, to hinder you from getting to the role and the plan of the Lord concerning your life. But then if the pit couldn't conceal the purpose of, of the Lord concerning Joseph, if that system couldn't withhold the good that the Lord had installed in the life of this man called Joseph, then that barricade is not going to stop you in the name of Jesus. That hindrance that they might have set around about you. It is only going to be a stepping stone for you to uh, for, for you to be able to get to your purpose. Hallelujah. 
the brethren of Joseph didn't only end at uh, keeping him in that pit they realized that the pit wasn't enough to conceal the purpose of God upon this man called Joseph so they decided to sell him out but then selling this man Joseph out was only pushing him closer and closer to the purpose of God concerning his life you know the schemes of the enemy is such that when they try this means and it doesn't work they try another means they want to make every means uh, to be able to truncate the purpose of the Lord concerning your life the long and short of it all is that this man ended in the house of Potiphar and when he ended in the house of Potiphar the house of Potiphar and the things thereof the, the, the trap of uh, Potiphar's wife also had wanted to hinder him from becoming the person that the Lord had purposed him to become but little did they know that these things were working for his good little did they know that it was only aiding the purpose the mindset of the Lord from coming to uh, to pass in his life so the Bible makes us understand that he was in prison because of the lie that was told upon him in the house of Potiphar but then it wasn't the permission of the Lord it wasn't the purpose of the Lord that that lie that that uh, imprisonment will conceal the purpose of the Lord concerning his life beloved that situation you find yourself in that difficulty you find yourself in that confinement of hardship that you find yourself in I want you to understand this morning that if only your life has been uh, orchestrated by the almighty God himself if only you are still abiding with the Lord then do not be deceived do not be troubled at all do not be dismayed by the things that the enemy may bring your way because except the Lord permits these things wouldn't be able to uh, hinder the purpose of the Lord from coming to pass in your life. So as we all know, the brethren couldn't cut short the purpose of the Lord concerning the life of Joseph. The pit that they, they, they kept him in couldn't hide him from uh, seeing the glory that the Lord had in store for him. The house of Potiphar and then the wife of Potiphar, the, the, the lies that were told against him couldn't stop the plan of the Lord from coming to pass in his life. And neither could the prison term or he being in prison uh, stop the purpose of the Lord from coming to pass in his life. Why? Because that wasn't the plan of the Lord. And Joseph was a man who was walking in the will and in the purpose of the Lord. You know when when you are with the Lord, when you have waited upon the Lord and then you have drawn close to the Lord, you walk with the Lord. You are walking according to the purpose of the Lord. It isn't that the plans of the enemy wouldn't come. It isn't that the afflictions of the enemy wouldn't come. You think when Joseph was in the pit, he was finding it easy? I believe it was a miserable situation that he found himself in. I believe that when Joseph was being sold out by his own brethren, it was a miserable 
situation that he found himself in. For him to be in prison, it wasn't a, a, a very pleasant situation for him to find himself in. But then everything that the enemies brought his way, every scheme that the Lord permitted uh, to, uh, to be seen in the life of this man called Joseph, was working for his good. Was bringing his purpose to perfection. Was trying to uh, help establish the plan and then the will of the Lord concerning the life of Joseph. So when you read from uh, Genesis chapter 50, when you read from uh, verse 20 of Genesis chapter 50, Joseph said to his brethren he said but as for you you thought evil against me but God meant it unto good to bring to pass uh, as it is this day to save much people alive so when the Lord permitted the brethren to bring all those things upon his life though the Lord permitted these things to come his way he hadn't given them the permission to alter the purpose for which he had brought this man Joseph onto this earth so every plan that they planned against him any evil that they thought they were working against him because he was walking in the, uh, the, the will of God in the way of the Lord in the line and in the purpose for which the Lord has brought him to pass he said unto his brethren though you thought evil against me though you thought you were trying to cut short the, 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 the dreams that I was telling you about though you saw that which the Lord had given unto me you had wanted to take it away from me but in every effort you made every plan you did every scheme that you worked against me was only drawing me closer to the purpose of the Lord in my life was only uh, uh, bringing into fruition the purpose of the Lord concerning my life I don't know what the purpose of the Lord is concerning your life but then the Lord is assuring us this day that as close as we have drawn to him let us continue to stick to the Lord let us continue to wait upon the Lord every plot of the enemy against us all the schemes of the enemies against us they are only uh, uh, helping that the purpose of the Lord to stand in our lives a day is coming you and I will be able to stand and say that which Joseph also said to his brethren Hey, the Lord was using it to work something good for our life. Hallelujah. And say unto the enemy that you thought evil against me to destroy my life and cast out the purpose of God for my life. But all that you did were working together for my good and the Lord has helped me. So, you know, except the Lord permits uh, uh, anything to come our way. One thing that I believe is that when we look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, you realize that when he came to this earth, everything about him, because he walked in the, uh, the, the will and purpose of the Lord, because he was doing the things that the Father asked him to, everything was according to the plan of the Lord. So you realize that he being ripped, he being spat on, he being betrayed by uh, uh, his very close uh, disciple and all that, they were all pushing him towards the, the purpose for which he was brought.
think that the enemy is after is our soul one thing that the enemy doesn't want to see is to see us enter into the kingdom of God so if in the in the first the enemy wouldn't want to see us walk with that strength into that uh, uh, kingdom of God or into the purpose for which the Lord has given us that strength. But then the Lord is assuring us that unless the Lord permits the enemy wouldn't be able to stop us from getting to that goal the enemy wouldn't be able to hinder us from entering into that glorious city you know the Lord is so wonderful this morning he was speaking to us through prophecy making us understand that some of us uh, in spite of all that he's doing we are not seeing it and we, we seem to be turning back to uh, the, the, the old lifestyles that we were living before you know when the Lord says this you, you needn't be sad at all but then you should be happy that the Lord is drawing you back on track so that you wouldn't have any wasted effort so that whatever thing that he has purpose concerning our lives will be able to come to pass amen making it to heaven isn't an easy journey making it to heaven there are so many things that would like to hinder us but then there is one thing that we are sure of that once we continue to walk hand in hand with the Lord once we continue to be obedient unto the Lord once we continue to heed unto every warning that the Lord gives unto us until the Lord permits which the Lord wouldn't permit no evil of the enemy no plots of the enemy will be able to draw us away from the path or uh, draw us from the purpose for which the Lord has brought us you know, I was looking at the journey of the Israelites to the promised land. And you realize that there were so many things that hindered them on their way. That even their own memory and then complaints was a hindrance unto them. That aside, there were so many people that they needed to fight with, so many people that they needed to be able to overcome. But then, in spite of all these suppositions, in spite of all these things that were hindrances unto them, when you go to uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 6 and then verse 8 down to 13. We realize that whenever these things came against them, the Lord gave them power to be able to overcome. Whenever these kingdoms, these nations uh, confronted them, the Lord didn't allow them to prevail. Why? Because the Lord had a purpose for their lives. The Lord had a purpose for which He moved them from Egypt and then promised them to take them to that promised land. And the Lord isn't someone who starts and doesn't complete. So you realize that. Uh, that the Lord didn't allow these hindrances on the way to stop them from getting to their goal. And glory be to the name of the Lord. Amen. That at the end, those uh, a lot of them fell along the way, and a lot of them died on the way. Those who availed themselves unto the Lord, those who continually walked upright before the Lord, the Lord was able to take them to that promised land. 
want to talk, Beloved, the journey isn't going to be easy. The journey to the promised land isn't going to be easy. There are so many things that will love to hinder us. But then, unless the Lord permits, these things wouldn't be able to draw us from the, the feet of the Lord. But then, they will only come to strengthen us for the journey that is ahead of us. I don't know what it is that that seems to be troubling you. I don't know what it is that it seems to be pulling you back in your Christian journey. But then if only we continue to rely on the Lord. If only we continue to walk hand in hand with the Lord. Then nothing will be able to help us. Nothing will be able to move us off track. If that is the case. Then what do we need to do? As Christians. What do we need to do? First of all. We need to constantly make our gaze straight with the Lord. We need to constantly make our parts upright before the Lord. We need to constantly make our lives worthy of, uh, uh, of the praise before the Lord. So we realize that Satan was able to uh, testify that indeed Job is a God-fearing man. Job, Job is one who, who has lived uprightly and all that because uh, God has set a certain hedge around him. And he couldn't tamper with the life of Job or anything that belonged to Job because the, uh, the protection of the Lord was run about him. But then Job had to continually make his path straight before the Lord for the Lord to continually also be for him. You know, if you are standing in, in, uh, in right standing with God, if your parts are made straight with, before the Lord, the, the enemy would have to take permit from the Lord before he would be able to harm you. A uh, 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 testimony that I heard concerning one uh, brother. I don't remember the story very well, but then one thing that I remember is that this man was persistent in prayer and then he constantly lived a life that was right before the Lord. And because of uh, his life that he lived and then because he was prayerful, the Lord made a hedge of fire around him. And until he broke that wall, until he, he allowed a little sleep that the enemy couldn't make way into that uh, hedge that the Lord had uh, made around him. That is telling us that until you and I uh, sleep in our Christian journey, until you and I uh, are swayed off the path of the Lord, then the Lord will also continually be with us. So you can write uh, Job chapter 1 verse 1 and then verse 2 that was when the Lord testified about this man called Job about his uprightness and then the fear of the Lord that he had another thing we need to do is that we need to trust in, uh, in the Lord to order our steps. We need to trust in the Lord to order our steps. If only the, the purpose of the Lord will come to pass in our lives. If only it will be that except the Lord permits that uh, no evil will be able to befall us. Then we need to be people whose lives are ordered by the Lord. 
We need to be people whose lives are according to the will and then the purpose of the Lord. You realize that people like Joseph, people like David and the rest, because everything of theirs was according to the purpose of the Lord, though they went through so many challenges, though they went through so many difficulties, the Lord didn't permit the enemies to be able to overcome them because their lives were ordered by the Lord. Their steps of theirs were ordered by the Lord. Lastly, another thing we need to do is we need to be willing to hold on to our integrity against all odds. We need to be willing to hold on into on to our integrity against all odds. If only we wouldn't compromise in any way. If only we wouldn't allow anything sway us off the path of the Lord. You know, in, in this Christian journey of ours, the things that oppose us are very strong. If you and I will be very true to ourselves, you realize that sometimes these things can hit you so hard that you feel like giving up, you feel like letting go in this journey. But then the Lord is telling us that if only in all these situations we continue to hold on to our integrity, if only in all these situations we continue to be steadfast in the Lord, if only in all these situations we wouldn't compromise on our faith in any way then the Lord is also never going to disappoint us. Then the Lord is also never going to permit the enemy to have his way in our life. Then the Lord is also uh, going to see to it that his glory will be made manifest in, the, in our lives at the latter end. So we see in the life of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in Daniel chapter chapter 3 when they had refused to compromise when they had refused to uh, let go of their integrity they were faced with a very fierce challenge the Bible makes us understand that the furnace in which they were going to be placed had been killed, uh, the, the fire over there had been kindled over and over again. And this thing was strong enough to deter them so that they would let go of their integrity. But in chapter 3 verse 16, they said unto the king that our Lord is more than able to deliver us. But then even if he doesn't deliver us, we wouldn't bow down to your idol. In an answer, what they were saying is that once we are standing in our integrity, once we have not compromised on our faith, once we have decided to continually stick to our God, unless our God permits you wouldn't be able to have a way upon our lives unless the Lord permits you wouldn't be able to destroy us unless the Lord permits your fire and then the, uh, the, 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 the offenders that you have prepared for us wouldn't be able to consume us I don't know whatever fairness that this life might be preparing ahead of you I don't know whatever fairness that have, might have been kindled up against you but then just hold on to your integrity just stand steadfast in the Lord do not let go of that which the Lord has given unto you whatever strength whatever good thing that the Lord has deposited into you continue to hold firm unto these things and as Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said unto 
to the king except the Lord permits you except the Lord gives way except the Lord allows this furnace to overcome us though the fire may be burning though it may be scorching against us though we see that indeed the fire had been kindled against us we are trusting on the almighty God we are trusting on the almighty God once we are holding on to our integrity nothing will be able to harm us nothing will be able to deter us and until we have reached our home until we have reached that goal until the purpose of the Lord has come to pass in our life nothing will be able to stop us nothing will be able to stop us but then we need to hold on to our integrity we need it we need to be steadfast in our faith and when we are steadfast in our faith then we are sure that indeed unless the Lord permits except the, except the Lord gives way nothing will happen to us coincidentally and indeed the Lord was proven faithful in the life of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego beloved the Lord is always faithful to those who also remain faithful unto him but then the question is are we willing to stand in our integrity are we willing to hold fast unto that which the Lord has given unto us upon the period that we have waited or before the Lord those good virtues that the Lord has imparted into us the strength and the zeal and, and, and every good thing that the Lord has given unto us are we willing to continue working in these things if only we are willing then the Lord wants me to tell you this morning then that nothing will be able to overcome us nothing will be able to prevail against us so back to Isaiah chapter 7 verse 1 down to 7 though the enemies plotted though the enemies planned their schemes against the people of Judah but because that wasn't the plan of the Lord because the Lord hadn't permitted them to prevail against the people of Judah the Bible says that it wasn't going to be made to stand neither was it going to come to pass today whatever plot of the enemy against your life today whatever scheme of the enemy against your life if only it is not of the Lord if only the Lord hasn't permitted the Lord wants me to tell you this morning that it will never come to pass that if you will not allow them to prevail against you the Lord doesn't need to give the enemy a reason why he wouldn't allow it to prevail against you but only because he has said so only because he is God only because you have decided to cleave to him he has also decided to show his faithfulness upon your life the Lord is faithful and you continue to remain faithful to those who remain with him please let us only rise to our feet even as you write to your feet begin to open your mouth and say something unto the Lord begin to open your mouth and say something unto the Lord his word has made us understand that except he permits the enemies wouldn't have a way in our lives but then we also have a role to play that is we need to constantly uh, make our gaze straight before the Lord we need to constantly remain upright in the sight of the Lord we need to continually hold on onto our integrity and then trust that the Lord will order our steps and our ways let us open our mouth and begin to say something unto the Lord if there is anything that will hinder us from remaining faithful unto the Lord 
Let us open our mouth and begin to talk unto the Lord this morning. May the Lord help us. May the Lord strengthen us. May the Lord continue to keep us. That no matter what will come our way, our ways will be made straight before him. So that like Job, unless the Lord permits, the enemy wouldn't be able to come close to us. Open your mouth and begin to say something unto the Lord. in Jesus mighty name have we prayed Amen. beloved we are praying once again we are combining two things we are praying for ourselves and also the church of the Lord we realize that though many were the things that happened in the life of Joseph because Joseph was someone who was upon the heart of the Lord because he was someone who was called according to the purpose of the Lord though those things seem to be afflicting him everything worked for the, the, the good of Joseph everything worked that the purpose of the Lord will be established in his life therefore at this moment we are praying for ourselves and the church of the Lord whatever schemes of the enemy that are against us whatever plots of the enemy that are working against us if he need his word has made us understand that all things work for our good for those who are called according to his purpose and those who love him may he continue to direct our paths may he continue to orchestrate our lives that everything that will come our way everything that he permits our way will be one that will enable his will and his purpose to, uh, to, to be made materialized in our life so that at the end his glory alone will be seen in our life let us open our mouth to pray in jesus mighty name have you prayed amen we are praying lastly for ourselves once again when you read from lamentations chapter 3 verse 37 he says who is he that saith and it come to pass meaning that there is someone who is able to say for it to come to pass 
There is someone who is able to decree for it to stand. We are praying unto the Almighty God. Whatever said, whatever thing He has said concerning us, whatever thing that He has purposed concerning our lives, whatever thing that He predestined us for, may they be made manifest in our lives in the name of Jesus. May they come to pass in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. May nothing hinder the purpose of the Lord concerning our life. Whatever thing that the Lord has to show for us, may they be made materialized. Let us open our mouth and begin to pray to in Jesus mighty name have we prayed Amen. let us humbly resume our seats in a mode of prayer even as we resume our seats we let us thank God for answering our prayers Yes, Lord. 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 Everybody is here, Cassa said, and counting. Everybody sounds up a say a quayanim. Now, dear Sammy, a bedroom, you see, your bomb pie is thrown in the demo. Send no more be a bay up and see the way a brabomo. And no more be a tough one, she said, Tia, and no more be a tough one, the buyer brabomo. Everybody is so some money in a year here. Money in a income on the sea here. No, a tough one will say, Well, I didn't go home. Oh, no, I'll buy a woman and see a year. Now, tough one, you move near Fanny Munyam in our mouth. Your dower so about Fanny Mukan was them. Ewa di asosa kwasuwa si shano. Ewa di kwasuwa si esi eno. E mwa tafu nyi ya di papa wadi asene nse de biya rata. Ewa di asosa fambambo tono so. Ewa di kwasuwa ni si esi eno. E mwa unyuma pana debi obe jina biya no. Wetimia nya di achen sa di ashe ye unkwane. Ewa di ma bambo nko son toye so. Kwasuwa ni ye nyan koppo. Na ipuwa ni enti minti na unche nyo oma. Ni anumu ni enshi na be kwasuwa don so. Ya dawa si bebrese wa din konim. Wa yesu kishto di munti. Amen.